Hi there, today we're going to be taking a look at some equations with special cases. And what that means is we're going to examine their solutions. And they're either going to have no solution, infinitely many solutions, or what we've been used to solving is the one solution equations. Let's take a look. Okay, our first example is here. And to begin solving this, I notice that there are variables on both sides of the equation. So by starting there, I want to get both of those variables. I want to simplify it and get them together. In order to move something across the equal sign, I want to move this over to here, I have to use inverse operations, which means I have to use the opposite operation. So this negative 24, in order to get it to cancel out, I'm going to add 24 to both sides. A negative and a positive 24 will cancel out. And on the left side of the equation, I will have 20x. Careful here, a negative 4 plus 24 is 20. So I have 20x on the left. And then I'm going to bring down the other terms. Now, this looks like a typical two-step equation that you guys are getting really good at solving. So continuing with the idea of inverse operations, I'm going to undo the subtraction next. That allows me to cancel that out. And then I bring down on the right side, I have 20 x, or on the left side, I have 20x, and on the right side, I have 7. Our final step is to isolate the variable using inverse operations. I'm going to divide both sides by 20. And so my answer will be x equals 7 over 20, or if I did 7 divided by 20, my answer would be 0 0.35. So now we have to decide, is this no solution, is this infinitely many solutions, or is this one solution? Did we get, we, did we get an actual answer or a value for x? So when we get an x equals a value, that's called one solution. So you would circle that. Let's take a look at our second example. And um, actually, right, I don't know if you noticed this, but I noticed that the left side of the equation is exactly the same as the right side of the equation. They're identical twins, the left side and the right side. That should tell you something to begin with. Let's go ahead and distribute and see what happens here. So when we have parentheses, we undo those with the distributive property, which means we multiply. So 2 times negative 2, x is negative 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. So on the left side, I have negative 4x plus 8. And on the right side, when we distribute that 2 or multiply everything by 2, 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x, and 2 times 4 is 8. So look again, we still have the same thing on the left as we do on the right. We have twins. If we continue on and get pay attention, we have letters on both sides. If we try to get those together, if I add 4x to both sides of the equation, a negative 4x and a positive 4x is 0. But that cancels out on both sides of the equation. So that leaves me with 8 equals 8. Does 8 equal 8? Well, yes, that's a true statement. 8 does equal 8. And our variable has disappeared. We have no variable. So what is our solution then? If they're twins, it's infinitely many, many solutions. The one side is equal to the other side. That means any value that I sub in for x would make a true statement. Any answer out there, infinite solutions. So keep an eye out for uh, twins or twinfinite solutions is a good way to remember it as well. Twins. And here's our final example. Uh, they don't look like twins right away. So I, I don't know that what it's going to be yet. 
but I do see parentheses. And when I see parentheses, I like to use that distributive property, which is, means we're multiply. So we're going to multiply negative 2 times negative 6, a negative times a negative is a positive 6x. And negative 2 times negative 8 is a positive 16. On the right side, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6x, and negative 3 times a positive 5 is negative 15. Okay, so pause and look at, look at that. They're not twins, but I do notice that we do have the same variable on both sides, the same coefficient and variable. So let's get our letters together. Using our inverse operations, I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. A positive 6x and a negative 6x is 0, so that cancels out. That is gone. But that also happened on the left side. So on the left side, we're left with 16, and on the right side, we're left with negative 15. Does 16 equal negative 15? No. No, no, that's a false statement. So if you end up with a false statement, guess what kind of solution you're going to have? You're going to have no solution. So in conclusion, with these special cases, if it's a no solution equation, that means you get a false statement at the end. You get, like we got um, in our example, 16 which does not equal negative 15. So you get a false statement. If it's an infinitely many solution, that is where you get a true statement at the end, or you also get those twins. So you get the one side that is equal to the other side. So that's what infinite looks like. And then the one solution equations, that's what we've been doing. You get an actual answer like x equals 0 0.35. Okay, now you can use the back of this paper for your practice problems on Delta Math.